Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the last session of the day. Um, depending on how fast I talk today, we might get out of here early. Uh, if not, they'll hold up the signs in the back for me. Um, <clears throat> so I'm Dan Hellerstead. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the solution that we developed at Intertrade and Rockwell Collins to automate our uh, export compliance. And um, what that has done for our business. So th I consider this kind of the capstone of the day. So if, if you guys went to some of the other sessions, um, we heard about the import, uh, export um, uh, uh, reform, and we heard about um, how event manager can be used uh, to automate some, some processes. Um, we also heard about uh, some process mapping and some process redesign. So we really used all of those items um, in, in our solution here to, to come up with this, this automation of, of import-export laws. So my name is Dan Hellerstead. I'm a senior business integration analyst uh, with Rockwell Collins. I've been with Rockwell for eight years now. Um, I have a, a background in SAP. Um, so I started out doing SAP quality management. So I have an extensive background in, in quality. Um, I then moved to SAP service management um, and, and then finally to SAP finance. Uh, in that time, I've done six database conversions. Um, so six, over, over the last eight years, we bought different entities and we've uh, converted their databases into SAP. So when we decided to go with Quantum for our Intertrade subsidiary, um, it was a natural fit. And so uh, just last year, we, we implemented Quantum. And then um, just this May, we upgraded that, that implementation. So uh, it, I got a little experience with Quantum. So if you haven't heard about Rockwell Collins, um, we're a pioneer in the industry. Uh, in fact, I think today is the 25th anniversary of Apollo 11. That's really where we got our start. Um, one of our, one of our uh, key milestones in, in our company's history, that's where <clears throat> Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. And part of that video and audio transmission was, was done using our equipment. Um, so today we, we have a, a large sector um, where we support commercial product and where we support government product uh, dealing with a lot of the navigation and flight control systems. So <clears throat> Rockwell Collins itself is the corporate enterprise and we're located um, throughout the world. Uh, we have a lot of uh, locations uh, in, in other countries, but our headquarters is in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Now, Intertrade is a subsidiary of Rockwell Collins. It was for, uh, founded in 1969 and acquired by Rockwell Collins in 1999. Now, there's over, 100, uh, there's over 90 employees. There's actually 128 now. Um, there's UK, uh, locations in the US, uh, UK, France, and Singapore. Um, we have two locations in the U.S. Our headquarters is in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and our physical inventory warehouse is in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, just this past fall, uh, we set up a London distribution center, so that's a third-party logistics provider that, that manages our warehouse in the U.K. And then we also have sales offices in France and Singapore. So in this session, we're going to learn a little bit about the solution that we designed and developed um, to help automate the, our export control and, and kind of what some of the benefits are to that. So we're going to talk about the import-export issues and how that can be costly to your business. Um, we're going to talk about what we did with Event Manager and some of the, the data elements that we had to set up to make that happen, and then how automating those rules can really help your company. So this is, <clears throat> this is actually a slide from last year, um, and these numbers might have changed with uh, the export reform that just came through, but 
Essentially, um, if you were at the, the export reform meeting earlier today, they, they had highlighted that, you know, if you do violate these export laws, um, there's some strict penalties associated with them. So there's, you, you know, there's criminal um, fines that, that can be assessed against you. There's also civil fines that can be asse assessed against you. And, and that's enough to shut down some companies. So, you know, a, a, a large company like, like Rockwell Collins, albeit bad, um, that we that we may uh, get one of these fines for letting something slip out the door that's not properly identified or tagged. Um, you know, fifty thousand dollars here and there is not good for the business, but it's not going to kill the business. Now, if you if you're a smaller organization and you only have a couple hundred employees, fifty thousand dollars could be a lot of your operating budget, and it could really really impact your your. Um, your company and, and may even close you. Um, not to mention the the, the civil um, the civil and criminal action uh, uh, issues with that. So there are there are individuals who have gone to jail um, for letting some of these knowingly uh, escape. And then <clears throat> one of the issues that that we like to get in front of is if your product is inaccurately tagged. It could be held up in um, in customs for a long period of time, and and as you guys know, that that can be costly to the business too. So that impacts your turnaround time. It could impact um, your contracts. Uh, it could impact your your committed ship date. So so that you know that does impact the business quite a bit. So from a high level process, um, we took a look at you know. How does this how does this fit into the flow of business at, at Intertrade? So, just at a high level, <clears throat> we're looking at the, the the product going out the door. So, forget you know acquiring the product, forget repairing the product, and forget where warehouse or, or storing the product. We're really looking at just shipping it. Then we are creating a sales order for it. Then we create a shipping order for it. And then we invoice the product. So, for us, the the key point in the process is really the moment that shipping order gets created. So, we what we did is we inserted um, a check here right after the sales order is is uh, is finalized and the shipping order is created. So. Building off of uh, a little bit of process analysis, <clears throat> this is really what the process looks like. So you can see here we've we've got a we've got a shipping order that is created, and what we've done is is we've created a event manager stored procedure that runs every five minutes, and what it'll do is it'll check um, check that shipping order for any kind of Parameter that we that we've built in. So, is the shipping order missing um, a license? Is is the product on the on the shipping order classified? Is the you know does the sales order have all the right information populated? So it runs a a, a pretty big gamut of checks um, before it before it it allows that order to process through. So, <clears throat> the export checker will apply a status to that shipping order. So everything comes in as pending, um, export checker runs, and then if any of those predefined variables that, that, that we've called out are missing, it's going to put a block on the shipping order. And then we've got a, another event that sends an email um, to the appropriate person letting them know that their shipping order has been blocked, so they can take the right action and get it corrected. So this 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 whole sequence of events runs essentially full cycle in 10 minutes. So every 10 minutes, it checks every open shipping order, um, checks to see if every parameter is filled in, and then either sets a block or a ready status, and then based on those shipping orders that are blocked or ready. Um, we'll send an email on it, and then 
The beauty of that is if anything changes within that 10 minute cycle, the event picks that up right away. So, so for instance, let's say, um, let's say the, the, part, the part on the shipping order hasn't been classified. So we've got, let's say, everybody uses A100 here. So let's say we've got part A100 with no classification on it. Well, one of the rules that we set up in our export checker is to say every part has to have a classification. And if it doesn't, we're going to block the shipping order. It's not going to leave our facility, and, and there's not going to be any escape. 